Hey guys, welcome back to part 8 of the Decker tutorial. So in the last video we learned how we can get variables into our dependency graph at runtime by passing them to a module over its constructor and then adding this module to the component. So first of all, as I already mentioned in the last video, instead of using this value here directly, we can also create a provides method for it. So we would write add provides, the return type is an int, and we would call it provide horsepower. And then we simply return horsepower. This way we add it to the dependency graph directly, which has the benefit that Decker can use it whenever this value is needed, whereas before we only used it in this one single constructor. This also means that you can now let Decker inject the constructor of the diesel engine directly, and we don't have to do this manually anymore. So now we could add the diesel engine as an argument to this provides method and just return it. Now when we run it, this will still work because Decker now knows where it can get this horsepower value from. And here we can see our log messages. So now we basically tell Decker whenever an integer is needed, you can get it from this provides method. Keep in mind that we don't say whenever horsepower is needed, you can get it from this provides method. Decker will only care about the return type. This of course can create some problems, but we will talk about them in a few minutes. And now it would make sense to put the horsepower part and the engine into separate modules, so we can use them independently from each other. But we will skip that here, because now I will show you a more efficient way to achieve the same result. Because instead of passing our horsepower value to the module, and then this module to the builder, we can also pass horsepower to the builder directly. For this let's go into our petrol engine, and change it similarly to our diesel engine, so it needs a horsepower value as well. Private int horsepower, which we pass over the constructor. And then we also want to show it in the log message. And we still want to pass this value at runtime, but now we will do it in a different way. For this we go into our car component, and inside this interface we add a nested interface, which we call builder, curly braces, and then we annotate this interface with add component builder, like this. This looks complicated, but all we do in here is defining the API for our car component builder ourselves. So right now we can call different methods on our car component builder here. The one where we can pass our diesel engine module and our build method. Both of them are auto-generated by Decker. And when we add this component builder interface, we can ourselves specify which methods we want to have available on this builder. And we have to define all of them, which means that we also have to add this build method, which returns the component itself. So back into our car component. First we create a method that returns a car component, which we call build. But we don't have to specify the body for this method. Again, Decker will implement this automatically, we just have to declare it here. Because we are overriding the builder definition. If this seems complicated to you, just follow everything step by step, it's actually pretty simple. And the reason why we do this in the first place is, that we can now add a method which we annotate with binds instance, and it has to return the builder itself. This is just normal Java builder pattern, it's nothing special. This is simply what allows these method chain calls, on the builder, and we call it like the value that we want to pass, horsepower. And we pass an int, horsepower. Again, we don't have to implement this method, Decker does all of this. And since we want to use our petrol engine module, we change this up here to petrol engine module. And then we go into our main activity here. And remove this line because we don't want to uh, pass the diesel engine module anymore. Instead we want to call dot horsepower, but it doesn't appear yet. So we have to uh, rebuild our project first. And then we can call dot horsepower, where we pass for example 150. And now similarly to our horsepower provides method in our module before, this value will be added to the dependency graph, and Decker can use it whenever we need an integer, which is now the case in our petrol engine module when we inject the constructor. So let's run this. And as we can see, this works. But the difference now is, 
that our petrol engine module still looks like before, it's still abstract, and we don't have to pass anything to it. So Decker doesn't have to instantiate it, which makes the code more efficient. So you should prefer binds instance over module constructor arguments whenever possible. And when you click on this component builder annotation and press Ctrl B, you get into the source code. And here you can find some rules of methods that you can add to this builder and how they have to be defined. But again, it's not as complicated as it seems. If you still need module instances that you have to pass, then of course you have to define these methods as well, like you can see here. And they always return a builder. And binds instance seems to be the main use case to add this component builder in the first place. There are some other benefits, like that you can give these methods arbitrary names, but besides that, there are not really any additional features that you can add besides Binds Instance. So when you search in Google, you will often find a combination of these two, Component Builder and Binds Instance, because this is the main reason to add a builder. Okay, but now let's again go into our Petrol engine. And let's add a second integer here. Let's say we also want a private int engine capacity. Again, these values are just for presentational purposes. And now we want to pass this to the constructor as well. And of course, assign it. And to see this value in the output, let's change our log message here. Put this into a separate line. Put a line break before with backslash n. And then we add another line plus backslash n engine capacity. And now when we run this again, try to guess what happens. And as we can see, we don't get an error, but we have the same value for both variables. This makes sense because as I mentioned before, when we add this integer to our dependency graph, like we do it with binds instance or with our provide horsepower method, we basically tell Dagger, hey, whenever an integer is needed, use this value here. Dagger doesn't know that this is horsepower. It only knows that this is an integer, which means that it will use it for any integer that it needs to provide. Now let's see what happens when we add a second integer at runtime. So again, a binds instance builder, which we call engine capacity, and it takes an integer as well, engine capacity. And then we go into our main activity again, where we have to pass it to our component builder. Let's say 1400. Let's run it again. This time we get a compile time error. Integer is bound multiple times. Okay, now we have the problem again. The decker doesn't know which integer is which. But fixing this problem is actually pretty easy. We go before our variable and write add named, which is another annotation, parenthesis, and then we put a string in here. And then we give it an arbitrary name, for example, horsepower. We do the same for our engine capacity. And now we have to do the same at the places where we need these values. And that is in our petrol engine, in the constructor. And here we do the same, at named, and here. Let's format this a bit better. And then when we restart it again, Dagger can now distinguish between these two values. So this was pretty simple. You can of course also use these named annotations in any other places where you have to provide or consume dependencies, like on provides methods or on add inject annotated fields. And by the way, those are not Dagger annotations, those are Java X annotations just like our inject annotation itself. And of course you can also use them with any other type that you have to bind multiple times, not only with ints, but you will most often need them for these simple types just because they appear more often. For this reason, it's good practice to just annotate these simple types directly, even if you don't have multiple bindings, just to avoid confusion later on. And Dagger distinguishes between them by the string here. Of course, this is prone to typos because if we would make a typo in here, this wouldn't work anymore. You can avoid this by creating your own qualifiers. For example, you could create an add horsepower annotation without a string or an add engine capacity annotation. 
but we will not learn about this for now to not make this video too complicated. So to summarize this, with Bind's instance we can get variables into our dependency graph at runtime, which has the same effect as passing a value at runtime to a module and then providing it over a provides method, but it is more efficient because Decker doesn't need to create an instance of the module. And now it would make sense to turn our diesel engine module back into an abstract module just with a binds method as we had it before and remove all the source power part, but I will leave it like this so you can take a look at the code later. Don't forget to subscribe for upcoming parts of this tutorial and if this video is helpful, please leave a like. Take care.